Apologetics. This is, of course, your host, Jim. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. All subscriptions are very important, and any comment with an interesting question or topic, I will get back to you. You can also hit me up on my email or my Discord. Now, I've covered the topic of the Book of Revelation before in more than one video. I've also covered the deity of Christ and all the times that he has talked about his own divinity in plenty of videos. In the future, I'm going to compile a video which is only about the deity of Christ from his own words and from the words of those who are immediately around him. So often we see that words are attributed to him, but he is not actually saying those words. And so when we get into arguments with people who do not believe in the deity of Christ, they will bring this up. Today, however, we're going to focus again on the book of Revelation, and specifically, Christ calling himself the first and the last, which, again, I've covered before. Today, we're going to look at it from a slightly different perspective. As you will know, in a video that I called a short response to Arianism that I produced a little while back, I spoke about how if the Father calls himself in Isaiah 44, 6, the first and the last, and then the Son uses that same title, people who are arguing against the divinity of Christ cannot say that first and last is an indication of creation, because that would imply, of course, that the Father is a created being, and that would make absolutely no sense even to a Unitarian, a Jew, or a Muslim. It would make no sense for the Father, who we all agree from the Old Testament is in fact God, to be a created being. So when Christ is using the title, the first and the last, we know that this is a title that denotes divinity, because the Father also uses the very same title in Isaiah 44, 6. But in addition to Isaiah 44, 6, which connects the New Testament to the Old Testament, and for those unaware, the reference that I'm talking about in the New Testament is in the book of Revelation chapter 1, verses 17 to 18 where Christ calls himself the first and the last, and we know that this is Jesus talking and not the Father, because he says that he was the one who was dead, and now he is alive. And we know the Father never died, only the Son died. The Holy Spirit did not die either, only the Son died, because the Son was the one who was crucified. So if God is saying, I am the first and the last, which is of course a statement that only God can make, and then that same exact person who is speaking says, I had died and now I'm alive, we know it's the Son who is speaking. So in the New Testament book of Revelation, the Son claims that he is the first and the last. In the Old Testament prophecy of Isaiah 44, 6, the Father claims he is also the first and the last. But what does first and last actually mean? Well, if we take a look at this bookcase over here, which does not belong to me, imagine that you have a normal bookshelf and not one that's diagonal like this. Interesting design. You would have on your bookshelf all of the books that you've collected. You have the first book and the last book, and you have the bookends that keep them together. So when the Father in Isaiah 44, 6, and the Son in Revelation 1, 17 to 18, claim to be the first and the last, they are like the bookends. They're before every single book, so they're before the very first book, and they are the last, so they're behind the very last book. What does this mean? It means that God is eternal. God exists before we existed, so he's before the first creation in this analogy, the book, and he is after the last creation in this analogy, the last book. That's what the first and the last is talking about. Now, I also want to take a look at the theology of Islam briefly. When we go to the Quran, which Muslims believe to be the direct word of God, which was recited via the angel Jibril or Gabriel toward the prophet Muhammad in the cave, these recitations are directly from God, they are uncreated, eternal, and have been with God since the beginning. So, these are not just the writings of a man. In this Quran, which they claim to be the perfect word of God, as we've already stated, so this is not a hadith which they, people can say, oh, that's daif, that's weak, or it's unreliable, or we don't know what that author was talking about. There are no authors here, because the Quran is supposed to be the 100% legitimate word of God. And in the 57th chapter, verse 3, the God in the Quran claims to be the first and the last. So God in Islam, in chapter 57 of the Quran, in verse 3, claims to be the first and the last, which is the exact same title that is given to the Father in Isaiah 44, 6, or rather the Father attributes to himself, and that the Son attributes to himself, in Revelation 1, 17 to 18. The Arabic, of course, is awal wa'akhir, which means the first and the last, if anybody wanted the exact reference in Arabic. So, the reason I bring up the Quran is not because I actually 
read or believe in it. But because it is the theology of Muslims, and Muslims are usually the ones in these kind of debates with Christians who are claiming that Jesus never claimed to be God, well, here is an attribute or a title given to God or that God bestows upon himself in the Quran, chapter 57, verse 3, where he is saying he is the first and the last, and nobody else other than God can be the first and the last, just like nobody else can claim to be uh, the truth, for example. So that's another example. When Jesus calls himself the truth in the Gospels, I am the truth, the way, and the life, He's not just truthful, he's claiming he literally is the embodiment of the truth. That is an attribute of God, to use the language of Islam. And so when God in Islam says in the eternal Quran, which is supposed to be perfect, is not a hadith, that he is the first and the last, and that is corroborated with the Old Testament, Isaiah 44, 6, and then Jesus uses the exact same title in the New Testament, then by the very standards of Islam, in that verse, Jesus is claiming to be God. Because Muslims cannot say, first and last does not mean your God, otherwise they're invalidating what is said in the Quran, chapter 57, verse 3. And they cannot claim that this is, again, uh, an interpretation of creation in the Bible, because, oh, this is a different text, so the meaning might be a little different, because we know that the Father claims that exact title in Isaiah 44, 6. So there's really no way around it. This is not a definitive proof that Christianity is true. But rather, when we're in a debate with Muslims and they say, when Jesus says he's first and last, that does not mean he's God. We say that's nonsense because the Father said it in the Old Testament. And even in your own holy scripture, your God, in his eternal words, said he is the first and the last. So if Jesus says that he is the same thing that God is in the Quran and God is in the Old Testament. And he's using a title that, put it this way, if I had said that, it would be blasphemous. So that's another thing to keep in mind. A lot of the times when arguing, well, did Jesus really mean he's God in that phrase? If any of us said that, it would be blasphemous. If Moses said, behold, I am the first and the last. I am the beginning and the end. Then that would be blasphemous for Moses to say. If Moses said, before Abraham existed, I am, that would be blasphemous for Moses to say. If Moses said, Father, glorify me with the glory I had with you in the beginning, before the creation of the earth, and in Christianity and Judaism, there is no concept of the prophets existing before they had been conceived on earth. It's not like their souls were dwindling up in heaven and then came down. That would be blasphemous for Moses to say. Pretty much anything that Jesus says when speaking on authority or speaking theologically of his own deity would be blasphemous for Moses to say. And Moses is the greatest prophet in the Bible. If we're not including Jesus as God and prophet, and we're just saying mere mortal prophets, Moses is without a doubt the greatest prophet in the Bible. And he would never, ever have been worthy enough to utter that he is the first and the last. And before someone says, well, didn't God refer to Moses as a God? Yes, he did refer to him as a God, but he did not refer to him as Jehovah, the Lord Almighty. He said, see, I have made you like a God compared to Pharaoh. Because Pharaoh is dependent on blind, deaf, mute, useless pagan idols from the Egyptian pantheon that cannot and will not do the things that God is capable of doing. So the gods of Egypt are powerless. Moses on earth wielding a portion of the power of God, which is bestowed to him from God directly, is like a God compared to the uselessness of the Egyptian pagan gods. And people, again, if they reply and say, well, how can you prove that Jesus is not that same thing as Moses? He's just a representative of God on earth and God has given him this power. For example, Jesus says that he is given authority and power. Well, in Revelation 5.13, the Father is also given authority and power. Does that invalidate the Father being God? No. Just like the first and the last cannot be an indication of creation because it would invalidate both the uh, chapter 57 verse 3 of the Quran as well as Isaiah 44 6 in both scenarios in Judaism Old Testament Christianity and in Islam saying the first and the last is a indication of creation would be blasphemous or at least would completely uh, devaluate the whole religion entirely uh, so no he actually claims these God titles for himself he does and claims things for himself that Moses even with all the power that God has given him the power to separate the sea the power to uh, crack open the rock and bring forth water. With all this power Moses is given, Moses would still never dare to say, I'm the first and the last. I'm the beginning and the end. I existed before Abraham. Uh, 
and using the divine name I am as well and so many other verses and there are there are no gospel verses that talk about Moses existing as an eternal word alongside God distinct from God but also God at the same time as shown in John 1 so really uh, there's no comparison whatsoever I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video I will do more videos like this zooming in on scriptural passages and comparing them to other theologies or comparing them to the Old Testament as always God bless see you guys next time